Lab. We are boondocking down Klondike Bluff Road, the first mile of which is just extremely rough, terribly rocky, and very slow going. We dropped the RV off about what did we go in a mile? Uh, not much more than a mile. Yeah, and now we're gonna scout with the car. We could stay where we're at, but we're a little exposed to the wind. Uh, I've got one bar of nothing. There are no letters. Mine says emergency calls only. <laughs> All yeah. right, moving on. Moving on. Beautiful view of the LaSalle Mountains out there. This is a really cute site. Um, there, it's really well maintained. Like somebody went to the effort of landscaping around this cacti cactus, and it's right on this cliff edge. Very, very scenic. Yeah, yeah. This is so much more scenic than where we have the RV right now. I think we came about six miles in, and yeah. our internet speeds seem pretty good. I think, I think we're gonna bring the RV back here. So we got a later start than we intended. Um, we thought we could leave our campsite on a different route. We were gonna complete the loop to head back to the highway because we were closer to the highway from that direction, but the road got really rough. Yeah, that definitely became impassable to a vehicle like ours. Four by four if you're coming in from, what, the south entrance? So, uh, yeah, I guess southeast entrance. Anyway, um, we are here now, what time is it? It's 9.30 <laughs> on a Tuesday. Brad has today off. And, and yeah. there's a big line. We're probably gonna have to wait a good 10 or 15 minutes to get up to the entrance. Hopefully not much more than that. We have a pro tip for when <laughs> you are coming up to these national parks and you see two lanes or more of very long traffic. Go in the lane with the most RVs, right? Yeah, because they... Uh... They take up the length of like three cars, so once one of those gets in, your lane just moves so much faster. We have been crushing <laughs> the, the, the lane next to us. What an awesome day exploring arches. Oh God, I can't even count the number of arches I saw today. I know, Lost yeah. Track. We have a plan tomorrow to get up super early and get to the gates before 8 a.m. Um, to go do delicate arch. Hopefully we'll get there before the parking is all taken, yeah. <laughs> at least. Yeah, so that's the plan for tomorrow. Um, this campsite that we're in is just amazing. They just jumped out to us right away because it has a really nice big fire pit. Yeah, we got this view of this like nice valley, mountains, all the trees. The road was so slow going and, and a bit rough, but I do think a high clearance, any high clearance vehicle can do it. Yep. Going slow. Um, we don't even have special tires or anything. They're just regular road tires and yeah. we were fine. Yeah. Yesterday we got to town. Uh, we got free water and dumped at the Maverick, the big Maverick in town. So that was yeah, awesome. Yeah, there's two Mavericks, but the, the one on the south end of town has a free dump and free water. Where did you get your propane? I got pro propane at the uh, farm feed supply store. Yep, and there's just a laundromat right next to the city market, so that worked out great. Brad provisioned a bit while I was doing laundry as well. Yeah, the city market has um, a good parking lot, so I was able to find room to park there. Yeah, and we also checked out Moab Brewing. 
So, um, yeah, it's got been an eventful couple of days. Already. Yeah, got a lot done yesterday, got into the park today. We're here in early April, um, so it's definitely into peak season for the park, but um, the weather is kind of fabulous. We've got highs in the 70s, lows in the 40s slash 50s, so I can't imagine it being much better than that. Yeah, I'm so glad we found a good time of year to come here. Yeah. So, uh, also hoping to get a bunch of astrophotography in and just soak up some Moab. I got up at 6. That's not easy for us. We uh, yeah, we're that. not what you would call morning people. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there's already a lot of light in the sky. And uh, we're going to go hike to Delicate Arch. So, stay tuned. This was bumper to bumper yesterday. It is 7.35 and there is zero wait here to get into the park. Just flying on in. There, the, the lot, was, lot was full. No, no, I think I think it was like half full. Oh, okay. I think there were a lot more spots beyond the bathroom. Okay. But yeah, we got parking, but there are a lot of people here. Uh, it's been a very well-maintained trail, and now we've gotten to the Slick Rock. So there will be uh, cairns to mark the way. So close. Yeah. We got it to ourselves, sort of. <laughs> We're on the back side. We got a very special angle. Yeah, you guys, that was the perfect time. I don't think we came up the right way, but no way seemed all that safe. No. The last little bit, once you get to this kind of basin, it's steep either way you go. Well, we were supposed to go behind, just around the basin entirely on the other side of the hill. Oh. Yeah. But where do you drop? On the other side of the hill. Oh, I guess go so up over that ridge there. when we go back, we'll yeah. go. You guys want to go there? Pretty amazing. One. So we had a little more time, so we're heading down. Uh, there, there's a trail we're taking to head down to Broken Arch and Tapestry Arch. That's right. So you can already see Broken Arch just right down there. Um, and we, Tapestry is about the same distance past that. Yeah, and it's actually not broken, so <laughs> maybe we can figure out why they named it. That. Yeah, we'll see. Nobody else here. <laughs> no, this is the first arch we've had entirely to ourselves. Yeah. Cool. 